We're rolling. All right, everybody. We got a brand new episode of Table Cheese, issue number 26. That's the issue. It's episode. Episode 26. Hey. It's me, your host, DFFT on Nerd Talk, and I'm here with the best of the best, the hey. man who has no no, no time to slouch. It's Anton Six. What's up, Anton? Anton Six, professional podcaster at your service, as always. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about today's episode. We got to talk about the trailers, some uh, some Spider Man Cross the Multiverse trailer. We got to have some some Final Fantasy talk to get into. Uh, th- there's a new Sonic game that came out on April Fool's Day. We got to be chatting about and like and some possible Momo con news. We got, got a lot of stuff to talk about today. So uh, what do you want to start with, man? Uh, I guess we could start with these Final Fantasy Pixel remasters because I know I sent you the games to check out in April. And yeah. you put that list up, but the date for these wasn't announced yet. I had right. a strong feeling it was going to be April. I honestly thought it'd be later in the month, but then people started getting charged for the their pre-orders of the physical edition and stuff like that. And then uh, early, I want to say Thursday morning, we got the release date, April 19th. We're getting Final Fantasy 1 through 6 on Switch and PlayStation. And it's actually a better version. So it's the same Pixel remasters that are available on Steam and mobile. But yeah. both of those versions had a font that just didn't fit the games at all. And that was like one of the most popular mods for the PC versions was to fix the fonts. Um, and so now they have a pixel font that looks better and they give you the option to change between the original soundtrack and the orchestrated version. So nice. yes, I was going to ask too, like I was going to actually bring up the games of the week or the games of the month that you put on here. Like if, if you, you, you know, you remember the list that you made, right? For yeah. the, the April month, what would you take out and put that in? Coffee like talk. Baseball? Okay, you, you didn't have you did not have to think about that. Oh, well, right. <laughs> it, just because coffee talk felt like one that is not necessarily appealing to me in particular. Okay. Like I gave the first coffee talk a try. I saw that it it was good and that it had you know merit to it, but it's also like. Easily, it is the one that is like has the least hype out of the list. I Monster Hunter being the highest, then probably behind that, I'd say Star Wars and you know Mega Man Battle Network. That was one of the yeah. first times when that got announced. I heard you talking about it, and I was like, "No, nah, I gotta let <laughs> D know <laughs> he's missing that's out." How, that's kind of how Table Cheese got started. You talked to me about that game, yeah. <laughs> And so, Advance Wars, I know is that one's really not for me in particular, but I know that that has a big audience, and people have been waiting a long time for that game because it got delayed indefinitely due to the war in Ukraine. Because yeah. it's yeah, a game about waging war in tanks and bombing the other side. So touchy subject, yeah. Right, and Japanese companies are especially sensitive about stuff like that i remember motor storm apocalypse got delayed like the game was done had gone gold had a release date everything and they delayed it because of the uh tsunami and earthquake in japan so i remember that yeah that was like a a decade ago man yeah more than that because i was was in high school yeah it was ps3 jeez I'm watching the I'm watching the trailer right now for the Final Fantasy Pixel re- remaster, and honestly, it looks pretty good. It looks like a fun game that like you can just get yourself deep inside of. It's like what, well, it's Final six Fantasy games. Two? It's Final yeah. Fantasy one through six, and it seems to be the best way to play them. Like I have them on my Steam Deck, but it'll be a totally different thing to have them on PlayStation and just be able to go off of those one through six, and then. I have seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, and ten, all digitally right there, ready to go. So, those of you who are ready, April nineteenth at eight a.m. is when it drops. Uh, eight a.m. Pacific Standard, uh, four p.m. BST is when it's dropped. So, so eight a.m. there. 
would be 11 would be here 11 a.m here all right or the other way Appreciate around I, I don't even know what PDT and BSE stands for, so we are we are not in good company right now for PDT time is uh, specific, and I just know that because doing a lot of content with the Rubies being on the West Coast, I have to think okay. of things in West Coast time, but I always mess it up. So let's see. Here, when it's midnight here, it's 9 p.m. there, so it's going back. So if it's 8 a.m. there... It would be 11 a.m. here. There you go. There's a little math for you guys on the show. See, table cheese is always doing different stuff, and like <laughs> right now we don't we're doing time difference. So. Right, time <laughs> zone. <laughs> the bane of <laughs> one of the banes of my existence. Right. Oh my god. If stuff will happen in Japan, oh man, following Japanese news. Yeah. Rough. Rough. <laughs> Def definitely rough. <laughs> It's like, oh, what? They have a presentation at 6 in the morning? I'll find out about it whenever I wake up. I mean, I'm not as young as I used to be, so getting up that time for watching the Saturday morning cartoons was one thing, but, you know, I am I am in my 40s, and I don't know if I can do that anymore, waking up at that time just, just for... I'll stay up, but I will not wake up at that time, for right. sure. Well, I might not even stay up till that time. That's <laughs> like, even that's extreme circumstances right there. <laughs> Ah, uh, you killed me. Uh, so there, there's also a new trailer that is dropped. Actually, it was a lot of trailers. Like Secret Invasion has dropped. Uh, yeah, Blue Beetle. Blue Spider Beetle dropped. Man. And uh, like Barbie. Spider Man dropped. God, the Barbie trailer. Dude, they, that cast is so stacked. We got Ahsoka. We, we, trailers have just been raining on us lately. All, all over the place. April is like the month for trailers, it seems like. But uh, you and I just watched the Spider Man Across the Spider Verse trailer. This is like part like my third time watching it. That's that's. I as I said before, I'm in my 40s now, and like I learned not to continuously watch trailers because I'll see something different every time, and that is a ruining experience for me when it comes to trailers. But like, we just watched this one. I'm hooked, man. I, I see Oscar just from this trailer alone. And I rarely say stuff like that. This looks like a good movie. Yeah, I mean, the last one is in like my upper echelon of movies. It's one of the few movies I have on Blu-ray, and yeah. I'm excited, like, when they announce this one and that it's a part one. I'm I'm just it's really excited. Uh, it's nice seeing, like, different Spider-Man. Like, uh, as, we, as we talked about, like, when we were watching the Indian Spider-Man, you got to see there. You got to see Scarlet Spider-Man. You got to see uh, Spider-Punk. Yeah, Spider-Punk is there also. It's just so many Spider-Mans. Like, and it, you, you touched on so much more than what you saw in the first movie. And the other cool thing is, like, it doesn't even seem like the first movie at all. It seems like something entirely different, which is rare for sequels. That's, like, that's, like, the crazy part to me. Well, I mean, considering the, they started out, like, with a base, the multiverse as a base. Right. And as far as I am aware, the Spider-Verse comics have really killed it as far as, like... Starting with the multiverse, introducing a lot of characters, and, like, representing the entire lineage of this character, like, being one of Marvel's biggest and longest-running characters. Yeah. Yeah, reality jumping in a spider in that, that, that Spider-Verse comic book was uh, was something to be witnessed. You gotta see the cosmic Spider-Man. You gotta see Spider-Man's being killed. You gotta, like, to interact with certain spider man like, for an entire comic book. While like you you pause the actual ongoing story just to read into that world, I, I read the first uh, chapter of the Spider Verse. I haven't read like the newer stuff that came out recently, but that that first volume, it was something to behold. Like because I I honestly thought while I was reading that that uh, most of you who don't know this, those of you who listen to the podcast the FGO podcast for a while know what I'm about to say. Uh, Marvel was pretty much tempting Disney to give them Spider Man. By creating the Spider Verse, because if you read that comic book, that was going to be like the death of all Spider Men. And if you read that comic book until like issue number six, it looked like it was about to happen. Like they were going to kill off Spider Man inside that comic book. And again, those of you who don't know, the Fantastic Four were canceled and put out of commission in the comic book universe along with Daredevil when Fox owned them. And that was a way to get those characters away from Fox. And it felt like they were doing the same thing with Spider-Man over at Sony until like that Civil War movie came out or was announced 
And again, like I tell everybody, check the dates because it lines up perfectly. But uh, yeah, that that's why I think the Spider Verse comic book was so good because they were trying to kill off Spider Man, and the writers put some of their best work inside there. And the fact that they're putting this into like a movie and making some characters who are protagonists seems like antagonists. I'm I'm 100 percent here for it. That's a little comic book knowledge for you guys. I went on a little. A little, little, little comic book rant, but uh, <laughs> it was such it was such a good time in comic book history and comic book stories. So this movie hit some spots for me for sure. Yeah, and I mean for me, they showed the suit from Spider Man PS4 in the first one, yes. and then one of the spiders in the lobby, or one of the spider people in the lobby was PlayStation Spider Man. So <laughs> did you hear the rumors this week that? Uh, they're working on a Spider Verse game. It's I have not. not heard it's about not that. Insomniac, and it's not going to be on the same scale and level as the Marvel Spider Man games. But it seems like it'll be like a narrative based thing. And these are still really early rumors. Of are you finding a link to it? I'm. I'm looking now as we're talking. Uh, it says that Spider-Man 2 is confirmed. That's that old news. That's uh, from a week ago. Animated short film release in June. That's also old news. Uh, Spider-Man Across the Universe PS5 for teases of PS5 players. That's what it is. So there, there is like some rumblings about it. But I'm not sure exactly uh, what it is exactly. So talking to somebody about a retweet. Uh... Is, is mostly talking about the film and not talking about like any kind of like it seems like a DLC could possibly come out, but this is tweeted from Insomniac Games. I'll send it to you. Maybe you can gather more from it than I did, but uh Well yeah, I I'm looking maybe whatever I was reading was just speculation. Because yeah. I'm not finding uh, <laughs> nothing about it. They scrubbed the internet. <laughs> but that'd be something really hard to scrub from the internet is them making a <laughs> Spider Verse game. <laughs> no, that, was, that was that was a full on joke, but I would like to see uh, a full on like say something like this. Considering that you know, again, it is the multiverse, and we did see like the, the Spider Verse from the video game inside of this film. Like the chances are they can still just kind of like put a little side story that's nothing but fanfare for the fans and just, you know, give that to us in a different kind of way. And I will accept that. All of it. I will take all of it. 100%. Like, so MK Ice and Fire, if this happens, I hope you guys are out there listening to this podcast. Make it happen because I want to watch this. Like, I don't want to play it because, you know, I'm that guy. But I definitely want to watch it. I definitely want to play it. Like, <laughs> because it was. Playing the original Spider Man, I was hoping Miles would get his own game, and then mm-hmm. we got Spider Man Miles Morales, and then what I was hoping out of Spider Man Two of being able to play as both of them, which seems to be the case that we're that's what we're going to be getting, and then they have to introduce Gwen at some point. They have to have introduce to. more Spider People, and they have to introduce the multiverse because we already know that the Spider Man from PlayStation's, like, the PlayStation Universe Spider-Man is in into the Spider-Verse and across the Spider-Verse, so I don't Let see... Let me ask you this. Go ahead. <clears throat> you, you played the uh, the Spider-Man game, right? Like, the... Mm-hmm. the Platinum did. Yeah. Like, did they ever give any DLC for side characters you could play? Like, like the Scarlet Spider-Man, like Kane, any of the characters? Oh, that, yeah, the uh, suits. It... As far as, like, there were suits galore. Like, you could play as, like, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield. Mm-hmm. They had, um... Yeah, if you look up Spider-Man PS4 suits, they had a lot of them. And they were... Just, like, just found it. And so, the Miles... Miles had some cool suits and had, like, but for me, it was the Into the Spider-Verse suit that I wore the entire game. <laughs> nice. I see Iron Spider-Man, Spider, Spider-Clan, Spider uh, Spider-Armor, uh, Mickey. Uh, you got I think the it was the Spider-Man. stealth suit I used. Yeah, that's what it looks I like. I used the, the Spider-Punk and the stealth suit, the green one. 
Let me see. Aaron Aaron Ackerman suit, Cyborg Spider Man suit, and of course into the Spider Verse suit. With uh. With Are Miles. you looking at Miles or Peter? I'm looking at Peter mostly. I, don't, I haven't gotten to Miles yet, but like seeing them in action, like game wise, my goodness, they look. Well, so yeah. I see Spider Punk. My God. Yeah, I use Spider, Spider Punk, Man? and I use, but I use this stealth suit, okay. the, like the black with the green. That was but it like, like Spider Punk um, still. Oh no. Okay. I I would use Spider Punk occasionally, but my main suit was the stealth suit with the black with the green. And then in yeah, that was like I my main on one for Peter. I see on the Spider Man also. That's uh <laughs> that's that's interesting. Yep. <laughs> and you're right, they had a lot of suits. I didn't I didn't know it got that deep. This is my gift for not playing the games. All right, I found the Miles Morales suits. A uh, homemade suit, great responsibility suit, the strike, Crimson Kyle, uh, Uptown Pride, classic suit, Miles Morales 2099, Into the Spider-Verse, Bodega Cat. What the f- so there's a cat <laughs> named Spider-Man that lives in a bodega, and Miles befriends that Spider-Man, and that cat like there's a takedown where you like push someone down and the cat like jumps out of your backpack and what? <laughs> helps you with the finisher so yeah the bodega cat one was like i did uh, the finisher in that but outside of that that entire game because i was able to i think it was like a pre-order bonus or something where you could get right. the into the spider verse suit early so as soon as the story allows you to change your suit i went straight to the into the spider verse one and never looked back <laughs> i bet you did man i bet you did uh but definitely if you find any other news about this spider-man suit that's coming out or like any other spider-man game attached to the movie we'll keep you guys posted but that's wow i didn't know it got that deep with the yeah. game it's oh like yeah the not, game like it's i put a lot of time uh Whatever year that oh, game yeah. originally came out on PS4, I platinumed it that year. I did everything <laughs> there was to do in that game. And you have you tried the retracing on that game? I know we're taking we're taking a break from the trailer to talk about this game, but you know it's a gaming podcast. What are you gonna do? And like, did you ever uh, do the retracing, the ray tracing for this uh, game? I mean, I swung around a little bit. I would have seen it more in Miles Morales. Okay. Uh, so I'm pretty sure, yeah, I did see it in Miles Morales. Um, but Spider Man PS4 didn't have it, and then the mm. remastered version on PS5 does have it, but it let me just import my save and get another platinum trophy off of it. So I didn't have as much incentive at, to replay it. Whereas Miles, gotcha. there are still trophies left for me to get. There's still a new game plus that I have to beat to get the platinum in that like i played through that and really enjoyed it and i think probably before spider-man 2 comes out i might go back and finish platinuming miles you got your work cut out for you man well it's Uh, not it's not that bad of a platinum i mean considering i work the the hardest part was beating the game the first time which is what i did so I've done the hardest part of platinuming that game. The rest is that, like really, beat? the rest is clean up and then do it on New Game Plus. But in New Game Plus, you can skip all the cutscenes and it's like a three-hour campaign. So <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about some some minuscule type news out there. Uh, Minecraft has a movie coming out in 2025 and Jason Momoa is going to be starring in that film. Are you sure that uh, wasn't just AI? Like I, f- well, that was- <laughs> it felt like the Pope in the bubble coat image of just like, it felt like chat GPT wrote that quote. <laughs> or the, Cause I saw the tweet you're talking about, but I was just okay. like, I was like, this seems like, because uh, I don't know if you've watched MKBHD's, recent videos on AI and there's AI that can trick you when you're not necessarily looking for AI and AI that'll trick you even when you know what you're looking at is AI. So they're like the (laughs) Kanye doing a bunch of different people's songs where they took like Drake and Frank Ocean songs and they had, they used the AI to make it sound like Kanye 
made those songs and it sounded extremely believable and we all knew it was AI generated but it still and they did it with Jay-Z too like where artists is like featuring Jay-Z but it's Jay-Z never actually rapped on this song so I hear what you're saying but uh, I, I'm on multiple different sites and they're all <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I like I like how you went there. I think about that kind of stuff all the time. I'm glad you went there. But uh, the release date is set, and this is for Warner Brothers, uh, April 4th of 2025. So that means that Momoa is a part of two big Warner Brothers films, one being Aquaman and the second being Minecraft. <laughs> it's all it's all fake, man. Everything is fake. Nothing's real anymore. So there you go. Minecraft movie with Jason Momoa. And apparently, if you listen to Anton, he doesn't want this. So, but yeah. I mean, happened. you know, I'll take it. Because the Tetris movie, did, did you get a chance to watch the Tetris movie yet? Uh, no, I, that's on my list. I just re-upped my, um, it's on Apple TV Plus, at least. Yep. Like, I, I just re-upped that so I can watch it. So that that is available for me. I haven't had a chance to watch anything, to be honest. That's why you haven't seen any reviews from me. But uh, I'm going to watch it. Hopefully we can talk about it. Do a little uh, table cheese review and oh. talk about it, but that. While we're here, while we're talking about watching things, I actually did watch something that is very much in your wheelhouse. I By watched Batman Ninja. Batman Ninja, that's the one. Oh my god! Feudal Japan, <laughs> like Gorilla oh Grodd, and god. all Deadshot, Poison Ivy, the Penguin, and the Joker make a mech. Out of cash. Yeah, he said it. He said it out loud. I didn't think he was going to, but he said it. That is some like some some AI trickery right there. Like that that happening because none of that made any sense. But yeah, yeah. I guess it, I guess I guess we're talking about it. <laughs> this movie was so good that it was bad, and it was so bad like it was shocking because uh, <laughs> a lot of it didn't make any sense whatsoever. Whatsoever but, at all. Because it was but like <laughs> Red Hood and Nightwing and Robin and Red Rum were all there, but they weren't the same people from the timeline that they were supposed to be from. Yeah, none of it made any sense. None of it made any like and it was a time traveling movie but that like no one knew they were time traveling the entire time. So all well, of no, it... they all knew that they had time traveled and it was yeah, it was... Did, did they know? Yeah. Did they know that? Because they didn't act like it most of the time. Only Batman and Joker did. Like, all the rest of them like, oh, why are we here? Like, I gotta rewatch this movie. Maybe we should, maybe we should do a re- review on it, because, my yeah. God. It's on HBO Max, and it's... Oh, I know. Oh, I know. It's not... Oh, I know. <laughs> not super long. I probably no. wouldn't go and rewatch it, but it's still kind of fresh <laughs> on my mind, so... Movie is something else, man. A movie is something else. Like, I'm like uh, all the Batman stuff was cool. Like even some of the Red Hood stuff was cool. But yeah. like they did s- such a good job of like designing Deadshot and designing Poison Ivy and just didn't you use them at all. The the Max is where like you know even though it was towards the end of the film the Max is where it really got me. Yeah, like, the spoiler, we're like the, once the castle started combining and they went full Megazord on me, I was like, what the what? hell is going on? <laughs> what are you doing right now? None of this makes any sense. What? <laughs> God, they got me with that one. Uh, in other in other news, also you you took me for a, I didn't think you were gonna bring that shit up at all. I'm just uh, like, you know, I watched it and I was waiting to talk to you specifically about it because I was like, Ooh, what is this? We don't talk about that movie. Batman fans do not talk about that movie at all. Just I'm like going in. I'm like it's called Batman Ninja. It has a lot of like really great like well known anime names attached to it. And then get big, there and sport. like the Red Hood stuff was weird. Like, but but the story like it was it was it wasn't awful. It's just like none of it really. It was all convoluted for some damn reason. But yeah, yeah, they didn't <sighs> put as much effort into making it make the sense that it could have totally made. Like I feel like yeah. they were time constrained. And, yeah. like, towards the end, they're like, oh, well, we only have X amount of screen time left, so let's have a mech kaiju battle. Mech battle. 
That's exactly how I felt. Yes, that's exactly how I felt. Like, okay, we got like 20 minutes to spare. Mech battle? Anybody? Let's just do a mech battle. Screw it. Let's just go full Voltron. Let's, let's just get it over with. But uh, in, in other news, <laughs> God of War Ragnarok has a new game plus. It's now available. Uh, this is my first time hearing about a new game plus. I had no idea what the hell this was until I listened to kind of funny games and they talked about this. Apparently, it's, uh, it's a continuation of the game in a way. You can play more of the game with like with new pieces of armor new weapons new experiences uh are you familiar with new game plus yeah i mean new game plus has been around i feel like since like the ps2 days it's like what we're a single player game when you beat it you get to start it over with all your equipment like i feel like i who i'm trying to think of the oldest game i've played that has a new game plus after you beat it and it's been it's been around for a while um and sometimes games usually come out with their new game plus like resident evil 4 remake came out and it has its new game plus right out of the box uh elden ring had its new game plus right out of the box uh i'm trying to think some other notable new game pluses of recent years what the hell so I, I went to fandom because like this, again this is my first time hearing about this this uh this term apparently it was coined in 1995 yeah uh, <laughs> it, and it was it was evolved in Chrono Trigger it's the first game that it was talked about in uh was it Megami Tensei uh, Legend of Zelda Ghosts and Goblins or a few games that also has that attached to yep. it that God uh, Arkham Origins Resident Evil Four Beautiful Joe, Castlevania, Limit of Innocence, uh, Parasite Eve, all have attachments to New Game Plus. Even Dead Space. This is this is like a new experience for me. I didn't know like this was a, a actual thing. Yeah. It's, uh, wow. Even games. So a lot of games. When you beat the game, two things you get is a chapter select, so you can go back and do any particular like chapters you want to do out of the story. And then they okay. have New Game Plus where you're running through the game, but instead of starting off from zero, you're starting off the, from the beginning. That's why I said uh, Miles Morales, I have to do New Game Plus to get the Platinum. And that'll be me starting at the beginning of the story. But with all my upgrades that I made, all my like suits, all my gear, all my gadgets, everything. It, it also seems like New Game Plus had other names. Other names that I am more familiar with. Uh, replay Mode, Remorting, Challenge Mode, and New Game EX. Now, Challenge Mode, I am familiar with. I am familiar with Challenge Mode. I didn't know like Challenge Mode was also called New Game Plus. Uh, back when I did play games in Challenge Mode, I didn't... Like, God of War. Like the, the first two God of War, you got to, like, to keep all your equipment and replay the game. Same for Kingdom Hearts. You get to play the game again and keep all your equipment. But... Uh, mm-hmm. It didn't give me like new experiences and new perks attached to it. I guess like I missed out on those games that gave you that, but it seems like it's uh Well, like it's, it's... Infamous Second Son was a great one that I can think back to because <clears throat> they uh when you be you get the concrete powers literally in like the last hour of the game and then you go into the new game plus with all the powers and that's when the concrete power really comes into play and is useful. Okay. Because, like, you get it for a story reason, use it in one boss fight, and then the game's over. You see, this is why I like doing this podcast, especially with you, because I, I do think I was more of a casual gamer. I Like, I, I followed the news, I followed the, the culture, but, like, the, the subtle nuances, like, stuff like this, I never really picked up on. But Infamous, Second Son, it's definitely one of those games that, like, a lot of people gravitated towards. And, like, you know, they, they, t- they did talk about, like, the replay value of that game. I just never knew like what the perks were. I played the first Infamous, but I never played Second Son. And it seems like I'm, I'm missing out on some fun experiences. Well, Second Son was technically three. There was Infamous and Infamous Two, which Infamous Two took place in a fictionalized New Orleans and had a lot of really cool, interesting. So they had that Cole just had electrical powers in the first game, and then he got right. There was different powers depending on which, like, whether you were good or evil in the second game. And then Infamous Second Son, you came out, and what was his power? Smoke? 
I'm not entirely sure what his power was in the third one. Or, like, as you're telling me. Yeah, it was like a smoke trans- tran- teleportation power. Yeah. Yeah, and then he eventually, over the course of that game, got neon and video and, like, a couple cool, interesting powers. And so... <clears throat> How long have you been since you played that game? Oof. When did Infamous Second Son come out? <laughs> <laughs> I think we got an answer. Came out 20, 2014. So it came out early 2014. I want to say I would have mm-hmm. had it platinum by the end of 2015. So, wow, you got it for a while. Yeah, I mean, I got it launch day. I have the collector's edition. That's actually. I wonder if you can see it behind me. Where is my infamous second son collector's edition? It's somewhere. He's looking. Yeah. He's looking. It's for somewhere. It. It's, <laughs> it's hard to find like that needle in the haystack when that haystack is so big, Anton. Well, I can find the game case, so I'll grab it. Let me see. And while he's looking for that, I'll prep you guys about the last thing we're gonna be talking about. We got one more story at the end. It's an April Fool story, but. Uh, it was like it was like he just found. Well, just, yeah, that's, this is the exclusive like edition, reversible right? cover from the collector's edition. I don't know where the box is, but yeah, yeah. I'm assuming you you prefer that that look to just a hand. That's awesome. Yeah. So and then here's my original disc and the collector's edition only DLC that they just recently released for everybody as a free DLC because it connected uh second son to the original infamous game it's like cole's legacy and so you like see what happened with cole post infamous 2 it uh, came out in july of last year yeah shit yeah just like considering i had it in 2014 and then used it beat the game platinumed it and it just got publicly released it literally says, like, the first story, uh, Kotaku says, like, hard to get Infamous Second Son DLC is now free at PlayStation Store. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> All right. So I, I highly recommend if anybody, ha- like, Infamous Second Son, I feel like it's part of the PlayStation Plus collection. And I feel like even if you wanted to buy it full price, looking at it at GameStop is $12. eBay is as low as, like, $5, so... If you, you know, want to get your hands on it and um, play that DLC. It's not a really Man, substantial don't... DLC, but... You know. Is it multiplayer? I forget. Oh, no. It's not multiplayer. It's one player, right? Yeah. yeah, single player. No, 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 no multiplayer. Yeah. That would have been cool if it were, but no, they are. <clears throat> but uh, they are fun. I did play the first one. I do remember the second one I played. I think I fell off that one. It, it didn't hit me as hard as the first one did. Story... Story in the first one was a lot better in the first one than the second one. The second one got a little convoluted in my eyes. But uh, to talk about the last story, the last story is the April Fool's game that came out, which is uh, the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. His one million downloads. Yep. As as Steam, like um, that is like one of the highest rated Steam games right now. Like that is, dude. What is that? What is like? What is all the, all the cool pranks that happen? On April Fools and people, you are one of the people who downloaded the game. Yep, wow. I'm one of those one million downloads. Uh, I saw it was a thing. Jeez. It's free on Steam. That is what helped contribute to it. Is because it has the Sonic IP, so that's something that's widely recognized. Like people see Sonic and are w- more willing to try it out. It was an April Fool's Day joke, and the best mm-hmm. April Fool's Day jokes are the things that they actually do. Yeah. It's like, oh, this would have been a cool idea. Oh, they actually did it. So, <laughs> and then it was free. So, and it's Steam Deck playable. So, how far are you getting it? I have not even opened it. Haven't even launched oh. it. <laughs> You're just there for support, right on. I well, like it. I just downloaded it in case it was like a limited time thing. So, you know, if I ever uh. decide to really want to get around to it, wow, the infamous Second Son Collector's Edition is going for. T- Two hundred and fifty dollars, sealed though. <laughs> Give it a couple more years; it'll be there in about by two twenty years, and like you know, then then like that, the seal won't be even more. Like who? 
that's how it goes, right? I'm trying to look that's, at that's... what came with. Oh, it came with a beanie that I feel like I gave to my cousin, because like my younger cousin, he's really into games, and, and uh, nowhere to be found. The <clears throat> main character's name is Desmond, and so is my cousin. That's also my cousin's name, so. I gave them the beanie at some point. But it's, I bet it's in a ditch somewhere, gathering water and rats are chewing on it. What? I'm joking. It, I'm joking. Like the beanie, not the kid. Do a beanie. He's not even a kid. He's like 20. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe, maybe he's responsible. Maybe like it's, it's, it's put in a drawer somewhere. If you ever yeah. find this beanie, take, take a picture of it and post it online, please. Because I want to see what this, what this looks like. Well, now I can just Google it. Too, I yeah, I, was, I can send you the image of everything that was in the collector's edition. Oh, shit. That was fast. Oh, there it is. Well, that's wicked. You got those buttons, too? Did the buttons come with it also? Or are those stickers? Those are buttons, but I don't feel like I have those. I feel like if I have those, they'd be in the box, and I don't know where the box is, so. A DUP patch, a vinyl decal. I see all these through the side over here. An exclusive digital content, uh, Destin Legendary in-game vest. That's a part of the game. That bean, that bean's pretty cool. I'll support the hell out of that. Well, yeah, that was, I remember this is one of the kind of the first big PlayStation first party PS4 games. And like for me, I really enjoyed Infamous 1 and 2 on PlayStation 3. So going into PlayStation 4, and I remember that's actually, I think, the first game that had a photo mode that I played. Mm. It wasn't, um, what the hell was that? Fatal Frame? You didn't, that wasn't one of your first ones? Well, I mean, that's. That's a game with cameras. That's not a photo <laughs> mode. <They're>... Okay. <laughs> I just throw it out there, man. <laughs> like a photo, like now the term photo mode, like when games get a photo mode, like people know what that means. And so. And apparently not all people. I'm, I'm still behind, apparently. Well, uh, you could look, and I'm sure you've seen screenshots. Like Marvel Spider Man has a photo mode. Uh, just look up. Literally the, literally, the first thing I popped up when I typed in photo mode is like Spider Man taking a picture of himself with this little action right here. So, literally, the first thing I saw when I typed it in. So, yeah, Which works because, like, the character photographer, yeah. God of War Ragnarok has a photo mode. Ghost of Tsushima has a photo mode. The Horizon games have a photo mode. So. Seems like a lot of the PlayStation first party games. Last of Us Part 1 photo mode. Um, Demon Souls has a photo mode. So yeah, a lot of games have it where like you just stop the game. The game's still running in real time so you can change things like time of day, lighting, like weather stuff like that and really get some cool interesting results out of photo mode trying to try to save a few <clears throat> so i can post them on twitter as you know i have to pay attention to what we're doing in the show and show the world what that what is that we're usually talking about and you know what i learned something new just about every episode i'm talking with you so why not share that with the world of people who may not know as much about it as uh as you may and you know spread that love that's why that's why i love that's what I really do love about uh, about podcasts. Uh, usually, I learn something new that I had no idea about beforehand. And uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the God of War one. I'm, I'm sending it to you right now, and uh, you get to see Kratos actually smiling, which is peculiar. Yeah, that Just, used to be in the design doc for Kratos, where Kratos wasn't allowed to smile. Jeez. All right. I mean, it makes sense, but damn. But right, yeah. And last, last one I'm sending it to you. But yeah, man. Callisto Protocol, is... yeah. And mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure Dead Space and Resident Evil 4, like, a lot of these games, like, if you can think of a big AAA, like, single-player modern game, there's no reason it shouldn't have a photo mode. Like, I know certain things can't. Like, Monster Hunter, they have, like... 
they kind of try, but it's not exactly what you would want out of it. Um, makes sense. Uh, things like sense, Elden yeah. Ring, but so even certain games like Ghost of Tsushima, if you're playing multiplayer, you can tell it you want to enable photo mode, and everybody can have like a connected photo mode experience. I think that's a, that's the a third one I sent you. It's Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't worry, folks. I'll, I'll post a, a lot of these on the page. I'll tag Anton inside of it also, so you guys can see it. I, I <clears throat> you guys like you gamer guys. You're, you're just like any other kind of nerd. You guys really focus on all the details of things that come out and just can be a whole rolodex of information. And I, so this is like the the things I love about nerd. Just like nerds, like get into stuff, man. Like you get into gaming for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to see if I can find something. Final Fantasy XIV. They it's called G pose, but they have a pretty decent photo mode. Right on. I think that's all I got for today's show. That's uh that's all I really have to talk about. Um, is there anything else you got? Well, you uh, up? coming up this weekend, uh, it'll the and they'll probably be out by the time this episode posts. I want to shout out two animes: uh, Gundam, The Witch from Mercury Core Two, is coming out this Sunday or to, later today as of recording and so is uh demon slayer the swordsmith's village episode one so nice very cool definitely some games to check out hopefully anton gets uh, to play them over the week and next week we can talk about like his experience about playing them um we are probably going to momocon i feel like uh, we're trying to get like get like to get it all in the works right now yep uh I didn't really talk to you about this before we talked about it, so I hope it's okay. I'm bringing this up. Yeah. But uh, well, plans I, are in the works. It is on the itinerary. Um, you know, applications have been submitted. We, I'm making moves. Yeah, I think MomoCon this year is May, May 25th through yeah. 28th. Okay. It's gonna be the Georgia War Congress Center, which is like a a throne throw away. From us mostly, well, when when I'm in Atlanta, as uh, as most of you know, I, I got like some some moving arrangements recently. But yeah, that is that is like the the time for Momo, the 25th. Like it's in Georgia, so we should definitely go. I feel like every convention in Georgia, we should probably try to hit up because Dragon Con is going to be here, the Anime uh, Weekend is going to be here, and the Weekend of Atlanta. Well, yeah, if our plans work out accordingly, we can definitely try and run them back for these other cons. So. Most definitely. And there'll be podcasts for you guys, like for a recap every time we go. Photos on the page. So make sure you check out the Anton6 Instagram and Twitter page. Make sure you check out FTL Nerd Talk page and check out Cheesy Controller Instagram. This is why you guys are more of a Twitter situation, right? Yeah. I mean, the best way to keep up with Cheesy Controller is through Discord and then Discord. through listening to the actual podcast. Um, but. Uh, as far as me personally, the best way to keep up with me and what I'm doing and what I'm playing is, uh, Twitter, but there you go. So make sure you check out Anton six on Twitter. Yep. At Anton six, three X's. Thank you. <laughs> I'm literally trying to type it up to see if I can find exactly what your URL was. Because it's different on both both platforms. It's not the same on, on each one. Well, that's because I originally... So, my Instagram account was originally Anton6, the same way it is on Twitter. But then I yep. made a different account. And then even though the account before I changed the name to something else that name is still associated to that original account, so I can't use it. That's funny, because that's exactly what happened to FGN Nerd Talk. Like, uh, someone else had to name FGN Nerd Talk, or maybe I could create a profile before I did, and I had to delete it. I don't remember. It's been so long ago, 2019. And I couldn't use FGN Nerd Talk. I had to put an S at the end of it. So, so FGN Nerd Talks. Right. It's not the name of the company. But yeah, I hear you. It's, it's, a, it's a hassle. It just is. But yep, Anton6, uh, all spelled out, three X's on mm -hmm. Twitter. Make sure you follow him. Like you're, you're, you're gaining a followership. People are seeing your work. They're coming to you. Yep, and shout out to you, D. Uh, that Blue Beetle tweet is probably one of the most engaged tweets I've ever been involved with. Blow it up. Isn't it? <laughs> 
Yeah, man. Absolutely. Like, you know, it was your idea. Like, you you, you brought it up. Uh, oh, yeah. we... You asked me, and I'm like, that is not the Buster Sword. No, I'll it's stand, not. I'll stand in my position of, like, the Buster Sword it's not, it's has a very enough. iconic, like... Oops, let me not break everything. <laughs> I have a you pin the of sword? the Buster Sword. Like, the Buster Sword is. has a distinct look, and that sword was not the Buster Sword. It was not. It was. It was similar. It really was. It was similar to it, but it was not the Buster Sword. And a lot of people really got to arms about that. It was. Uh, it was. A, it was a cool, fun nerd moment to see people kind of like you know nerding out about this sword and getting hyped about like the Blue Beetle thing at the same time, right? Yeah. And even the people, it's not quite Zangetsu. Zangetsu is probably closer to what it is. But I think so too. It, not exactly. Yeah, it's still not a. It it could be the blue beetle sword, like the blue beetle blade. But it's not Hopefully the they... master sword. It's not Zangetsu. <laughs> it's not. One person All... posted the Advent Children, the like Omni sword, yeah. and it very much is not that sword. <laughs> this is this is a cool thing about anime fans for sure. It just put it out there. And like talking about all different kind of anime and gamers, I feel like I like I, I dropped the ball not adding gamers attached to this too because uh, like they they would have loved to get involved in this, but this was uh this was a fun. I saw someone say that the that the Sin Grief from Soul Calibur, no, that's not a good sword. Someone said Berserk, no, that's not the Berserk sword. Come right, on, that's, that's not a good sword. sword. Come on, let's be serious. <laughs> but I mean, and it's, it's also, also good that it is a sword that evokes a lot of these really cool swords but while not yeah. being any of them without just straight See? up lifting the design of any of them i think i think someone said like also said what you said uh does uh, uh zambuza zabuza yeah from yeah og naruto i'm like and it's similar to that but zabuza has had the, has the hole in it and it's yeah. much bigger but for me, probably the closest sword that I could say. Because I thought, I always mix up Zabuza and Kisame because they were part of the legendary swordsman in Naruto. And, but Kisame's sword is like bandaged up and it's like a shark thing that goes with his shark aesthetic. But Zabuza, yeah, I'd say Zabuza's sword is probably the closest sword to the Blue Beetle Blade. Stick to uh to Ichigo's sword. I think Ichigo's like sword is pretty close. Like I know I know it gets a little wide, and like in like different different iterations of. It, but I think like it's the closest to the, that I can say like definitively like like that's where it was closest to for me. Yeah, Zangetsu is just bigger like that, and that's yeah. one of the things. Both the Buster Sword and Zangetsu are way bigger than the sword he used. <laughs> See, we're getting into it already. This is uh, always fun to talk about nerd stuff like this. Hopefully, we can find more topics to put out there for you guys. I'm DFFT on Nerd Talk. And I'm Anton Six with Cheesy Controller Podcast. Until next time, you guys take it easy. And keep it cheesy.